tired of muted VODs and maybe not being able to play your own music on stream? Something like this? Or even this? Hello, I am TriggerFTU and I will show you how you too can stream with your tunes, but with the music only muted for the VOD, letting your viewers come back to see you offline and see your content without any issues. So you're gonna need a few programs to be able to make this stuff happen. One of the programs that you will need to make it happen, and this is in the case that you don't have an XLR with a digital based sound control on your PC or your streaming device. Say you don't have a Go XLR or Avermedia's new Stream Deck alternative or an XLR device. This is where Banana and Potato is going to come in handy with a virtual cable. The first program you will need, in fact, is OBS Studio. Secondly, you will need a virtual cable software. Let's take a look. Starting on the top of the list, you're going to need VB audio software or virtual cable software or virtual audio device. Now, me myself, I have a Go XLR sitting here to the side, so I use that primarily for all the sources, including the fact that I use their software. Alternatively, there are other pieces of software that you may need in included. Mind you, VB Audio is free to use. Another thing is Voice Meter Banana or Potato. It'll give you multiple sources, but for now, we're not going to work with Voice Meter Banana or Potato. We're just going to use the virtual cable. To get this file, it's really simple and straightforward. You download it, boom, it'll start to download the driver pack. From there, you're going to want to open and install the virtual cable software. This is for your 32-bit applications and, of course, a version for your 64-bit applications. If you have an operating system that's 64-bit, most people currently do nowadays, you use a 64-bit or something simple. You use, just use a normal setup. The control panel, we won't worry too much about. Next piece of software that you will need is OBS Studio. We'll go over to their website. As of current, version 26.1.1 has been released. Windows if you got Windows, Mac if you've got Mac. Now, of course, we're going to go through Windows, download it, and we will install. I already have OBS Studio currently installed, but we'll take a gander at that. Here we have OBS Studio. I already have virtual cable installed. So to set things up for that said virtual cable, first thing we're gonna do is set it up. Say we want music running in the background. We're gonna go to one of my favorite websites, monstertackcat.com. We'll go to the player. I'm gonna have some music that'll play. It's on creator safe mode. That's enabled, so we don't have to worry too much about it. Silk is up and running. Right. Monster Cat Silk. So we got our music that we have in the background. We will not be having this play whatsoever when it comes down to playing it through OBS. Well, we could, but yeah. Anyways. We want this music playing, but we don't want it to be played anywhere else. We have our browser open, and that's a good thing. One, this will help us to be able to navigate and ensure that we set the proper source. Now, you're probably wondering what I'm talking about. This is something that's important that we need to start off with first. So we're going to go down to our sound settings. It'll be on the bottom right hand corner. You can find it there. You want to go to open sound settings. From there, a new browser will pop up. Of course, you get to see everything that's going on. I got my mic for mic, system for system. We're gonna go to advanced sound options. Click. And of course, we have our web browser. Somewhere in here. Oh, maybe we should play some tunes in the background. Make sure that it's got things rolling. There it is. So as a default, it'll set default default. What I'm going to do is I want to set it to my virtual cable that I have deemed music. 
From there, it will go out of the virtual cable that is set. Music is what I have set. You want to set it for VB cable input. That is just starting off. Now we have the audio going out of the, array, the output that we want it to go through. Say you want to hear it. We open up our sound settings again. We go into sound control panel and a new screen will pop up. With this screen, what you'll do is you go through recording, the virtual output device. You would go into properties. In here, we would go into properties of the device. Listen will be the next thing on the list. And then listen to device. You want to set the video audio playback device as to whatever your audio playback device is. For me, it will be the system. Since I already have everything set up through an XLR, I'm just going to let it go. Now with everything pre-input and set up from the Windows side, we're going to want to set up your audio settings. Now, you know how OBS is. Slobs is no different. You have to set everything up manually. So we'll go under our settings. We're gonna set up our streams and output here momentarily. So of course we're gonna set it up for Twitch. Output, guess what? We'll have these two, this new ticker. We'll get to that momentarily. We'll go to audio. We wanna set up our microphone. So my microphone is of course the chat mic. Your system audio to be your system audio. And then your secondary audio to be your music or your virtual cable. Hit apply and you'll notice that there's two things that pop up. Audio device two and your microphone and your desktop audio one. Here's where things are going to get interesting. Remember that track button that I showed you earlier? We're going to go into there. You're going to enable it and set it for track two. Now, what this does is it separates the tracks from between track one, which is your stream based audio track and track two, which is your VOD track. I know it's going to sound very interesting, very weird. It's not exactly what people think. Twitch doesn't always record on the fly. They do accept alternative tracks of audio that come in. All right. So we're going to click OK. We got everything sorted. Desktop audio one. We're going to do this real quick just so that we know what our desktop audio two device is. And we're just going to call it music. Boom. There we got our music. We're going to go into the advanced audio settings using the gear advanced audio properties and you'll notice there's a few extra things that'll be popping in here one thing that is in particular is your tracks your audio balancer your audio monitoring sounds interesting yeah now instead of always having to go through and having to listen to device you can always go into here in addition set your music to audio monitor and output. That way you'll be able to hear it over the headphones. It won't be mixed in. You get the hint. Right now I have monitoring off. So you want music to be enabled for only track one. We can disable track two, three, four, five, six. That's perfectly fine. Same thing with your basic system device system audio device your primary one you can set that as track one and track two now with the microphone set for track one and track two that means it'll be live streamed and it will be recorded via the VOD let's take a look into what happens whenever we actually start playing music from monster cat so we have music playing now off of monster cat it can't be heard within of course the thing because I have it disabled here with my recording software but as you'll notice you'll see that it's actually playing whenever you go to stream that audio will be heard 
through the stream without any problems. But when you go back to your VOD, you'll realize it's muted. The music itself, gone. There's two advantages to this. One being the fact that A, if you're offline, you really can't get copyrighted noticed. You can't get copyright striked while you're offline because the audio is simply not there. It doesn't exist. Two, it allows you to have more control. Say you're playing a really hyped up game where you need to have your audio set where you can hear everything that's going on. The people in the stream, on the other hand, they don't need to be hearing all that. They see somebody that's really rocking it out and going for the win, entertaining them by being esports style. Or just in case of other matters, allowing them to enjoy the music that they want to listen to. But most of all, it'll prevent your stream from being muted for your VODs. Now, something else I will point out in addition. You'll notice that my slider set up to 100% with zero decibels setting. You don't want to set that up that way. You want to turn it down a notch. Personally, I set it down to about 50. At 50, people will be able to listen to the music. They'll be able to hear you in the foreground, your gameplay going on. You'll be able to listen to the tunes if they want to. And, and the advantages of all that, you can continue on growing your stream. Isn't that amazing? So, with that said, we have everything set up, everything planned out. Something that will also help with your audio settings. This is something that I've actually started pushing out for people. And it's not here. It's currently in the advanced audio settings. So in the advanced audio settings, something that might help improve your audio. I'm looking for it right here, guys and gals. Here it is, audio. Change your track audio from 160 to 320. There's a reason behind that. It'll improve the audio capabilities. It'll make you sound more clearer. It'll make things sound so much more impressive. Whenever it comes to streaming and using your microphone, one thing I will also mention, you want to keep it where your microphone audio is up near the red, at least below the, in the red, lower red area. You don't want to peek out, but you want it in the red area. That means you're sounding above and beyond. Game audio, always either in the green or below the yellow music in the green area. This will just help you all the way across the board. Any anyways, fellas, peeps, fellow beta testers and fellow streamers, content creators of sorts. My name is Trigger FTU. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for more content. In addition, if you're over on Facebook, don't forget to hit that like and share. This is important information for you guys and gals and people of all sorts to really utilize what OBS Studio is capable of. I'll see you all next time.